Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking another look at my Prusa i3 Mark II S clone, I mean replica. This was never really intended as the, the final destination for this project. You might have noticed from day one I had this sort of slightly unique frame and yes, there was a purpose for that. Let's take a closer look. So when I first started taking a look at this Prusa i3 Mark II West replica, the idea was to make a really nice, strong and robust frame. And that's not really what this is. I mean, it's not a bad frame. The, the original Prusa design isn't terrible by any stretch, but I always felt it could do with a little stiffening up. The reason for doing that was that I was hoping you might get some slightly better prints. You might have slightly less wobble if you have a slightly stiffer frame. Is it the weakest part of the chain? Probably not but I wanted to do it anyway, so screw it, let's do it. On the left here, you can see the result of the prototype of that frame. It's an MDF cutout that I did entirely by hand and took me many, many hours. It was kind of a waste of time because I never built a printer on it, so I never really tested it in this format, therefore making the prototype kind of redundant. But I did at least test that it fitted together and fitted together in the way that I hoped it would. But you might be saying, an MDF frame is no good for a 3D printer, especially compared to steel rods and a six millimeter thick aluminium plate. I've also used a spray adhesive, which will probably catch fire at anything above 50 degrees Celsius, which, while quite entertaining, probably wouldn't really get me very far in the whole 3D printing scheme of things. And that's where this pile of parts comes in. This is all six millimeter aluminium, water jet cut to my, I say my design, I mean, it's the Prusa design, but with a sort of plate frame influence, and it will finally sort of look something a little bit like this. So let's cue the music and do a bit of a build. So there you have it. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed that exciting little montage time lapse of me building this printer. So let's now answer some questions that you might have about it. 
The first one we'll go through is how much is different between this printer and the Mark II S replica. Well, other than the very obvious things being the aluminium frame, there's one or two little tweaks. Firstly, the electronics enclosure. You will have seen halfway through that sort of time lapse that I printed an entirely new electronics enclosure. That's because it fits slightly differently. It doesn't have the, uh, the width to be able to fit the whole enclosure. So it's just sort of one side of it without the lid. It screws in from the front and you, can, you have to take it all the way off if you want to access the actual electronics. So, I mean, swings and roundabouts, it's not the best from that point of view, but once it's set up, how much do you access it? Uh, the other thing is the power supply enclosure. Now it's fairly similar to the one I printed for the other, the, for the replica, based on the fact that the power supply is exactly the same, but there's just some slightly different holes, slightly different offsets of uh, sort of overall thickness to ensure that it fits this frame with the whole patterns that I've already got. Nothing really major, just little tweaks. The third change is the connection between the LCD screen and the main body because obviously those parts on the original are designed to clip onto the eight mil threaded rod, I have to have some slightly different design in order for it to fit this frame. So I basically cut off the bits that attach to the frame and made it flat and then put some holes through with a little nut holder so I can screw from one side and have the nut on the other and that's pretty much it. I also made a slight adaptation to that file to allow uh, you to use the LCD screens that have the big uh, was not the, what are they called? Vari it's the variable resistor, the thing that changes the screen brightness. Normally on the original Prusa design, they have a very small, tiny little one, but on the cheap ones you get from China, they have this big blue and white one. Now the big blue and white one doesn't fit with the normal clips, so I've made a cutout so you can slide it on past the big clippy thing, past the big resistor thing. So the next question is then, how many printed parts are there now on this frame? Well, you obviously have the whole X carriage, which is exactly the same as the original. So that's all those parts. And then you have one part for this, it's repeated four times. One here, one at the back, and then the change for those. This, which you already have, and this, which you already have. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 parts, I think 15, a total of 15 printed parts. I've also put this bit on the top, but it's a little bit broken because I mashed it on. But this just stops this rod because there's, with aluminium, there's nothing to really grip the rod. So it can move up with the bearings if it's not set quite right. So this just stops that rod being able to move vertically. But yeah, it's 15 3D printed parts. So now you know what the parts are. The next question is STL. And yes, the 3D printed parts will be going up on Thingiverse and links for those will be in the description. I mean, fundamentally, they're not particularly exciting unless you have got the entire frame as well because they're probably not particularly useful unless you have the big frame. And the parts for the frame, the design for the frame will also be available. Uh, I don't know when or how I'm gonna be doing that yet, but STLs obviously not particularly useful. So, I'm not sure how, but they will be available. And again, links for those will be in the description at some point in the near future. And of course, what you all want to know is what is the print quality like? Well, I was a little bit silly and forgot to do a test print on the previous frame before I disassembled it to make this one. So in terms of comparisons, I'm afraid I might have made a bit of a boo-boo there. Uh, the intention was to do a good comparison, but I've somewhat let myself down. Unless I disassemble this entirely and put it back to the old frame, then we're not gonna be getting any great comparisons. But what I can say is that it does exhibit the same flaws that I had in my replica. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. I'll be honest, I didn't do a lot of prints on the Mark II S replica just because I had the Mark III, so I didn't really need it that much at that point. I had planned the project before the Mark III was even announced, so. But what is worth pointing out is we are still getting the same under extrusion from the Mark II S clone, which I think is a result of the extruder idler. Extruder idler? Yeah, the, no, the extruder gear itself. So yes, the print quality is sort of good. It's sort of not particularly much better than the Mark II S that I had as a replica, but that was not really up to quality with the actual Mark II because I hadn't really set it all right in the first place. Hmm. I make it sound like it's a total piece of rubbish, and it's absolutely not. I mean, these parts that it's printed, other than uh, 
a slight Z wobble issue, which is because one of these lead screws is not particularly straight, and uh, an under extrusion as a result of that hub gear. Other than that, I mean, it's, it's really quite good. So lastly, is it worth it? No, not really. <laughs> it's a very expensive frame and probably makes a tiny little bit of difference. Maybe if I put, again, hundreds of hours into uh, calibrating and set up everything perfectly. Maybe if I'd done this from a genuine Mark IIs in the first place, I'd have had better results. But it's a lot of money, it's not a very cost optimized frame. There are probably much better ways to get equally rigid frames at a significantly lower cost. Buying one offs of this frame is like 350 pounds, which I think somewhere probably 420, 450 dollars. So yeah, probably not the best value for money and doesn't really exhibit great improvements in print quality or noise, given that most of the noise is from the fan anyway. So yes, probably not worth it, a little bit expensive, not the best print quality compared to an original Mark II S, but it was a damn lot of fun and it looks pretty awesome. So that's it for me on the ultimate Prusa i3 Mark II S frame. Maybe it's not the ultimate, but it was my ultimate frame, and I think it's pretty cool. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more from me. If you want to see sort of side bits from me, follow on Twitter and Instagram where I'll post behind the scenes and things like that. Don't forget to check out my videos on the original Mark II S replica and live streams of assembly the Mark, assembling the Mark III and all my other Mark III videos. There's plenty of Prusa stuff on the channel if you want to see it. I think I've thanked you already, but thank you very much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. So that's everything from me today on the Prusa i3 Mark II S Ultimate Aluminium 6mm frame. That's a mouthful. It's probably not the ultimate frame really, but it's my ultimate frame and it was a damn lot of fun. If you want to see more from me, don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for behind the scenes and leave a comment down below if you want to make a comment, obviously. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.